All right, what I'm going to cover today is uh, putting limit and home switches on a X2 style milling machine. Uh, so I'm running Mach 3, and I've purchased these Omron limit switches. They're made in Japan. Um, they have normally open and normally closed options. Um, I'm not into circuitry or electronics at all, so my terminology might be a bit off, but uh, I purchased these on eBay. I bought two bags of them. I think they have, yeah, they have 10 in each bag, and it was about 20 bucks. So I think I only need around nine, but I bought some extras just so if I mess any up or if I have future projects, I don't have to order them and pay shipping again. So what I did was I looked at the size of these holes, and then I went and found a tap in my uh, selection of taps I have in my shop, and I found this one that fit through there, and it was a size 4 by 40, so a number 4 with 40 threads per inch, and then I, I looked over to see what size drill I would need for that, and that was a size 38, so I selected one of those from my uh, container of drill bits and I also checked them uh, check the size with my uh, dial calipers just to make sure I had the right one and it was the proper one so then I came over here to the upper part of the z-axis and I just kinda held the limit switch to where I think I might want to use it and I went up until I found the mechanical limit of the machine and then backed it away from that a little bit and put my limit switch there. I scribed a line with a carbide scribe, uh, which is just like this. You can get them at, you know, pretty much anywhere online. It has a little carbide tip, so it's hard enough to scratch most materials. And on the back, it has a little magnet that's kind of handy. But anyway, I put it on there. I scribed a line on the top of it where I wanted it straight across and then I moved the z-axis down which I'll show you I actually used the machine to jog it down got it out of the way a bit and then I put it on there nice and straight and I stuck that little carbide scribe through the hole and I took a small hammer and I just tapped it uh, to make a little dent in there or center punch and then I did the same thing with the second hole with the hammer and the scribe now it's got a carbide tip and I was careful to hit it just one good time because carbide is very very hard which makes it also very brittle so you've got a chance of destroying your carbide tip, but it was a risk I was willing to take because that gave me a very good uh, location for center on that hole. And then I took my other punch here and I just put that on that little dent that I made with the other one. And I took my ball peen hammer and I gave it a good whack. After that, I took that little drill bit I put a little bit of this ultra slick engine assembly lube on the tip of it as a lubricant uh, because it's thick enough to where it's not just going to run right off of it and it actually just stays right on the drill bit. I drilled it through with my standard uh, cordless power drill. I tried to just be nice and straight on there and then I took my tap and tapped it. If you're not familiar on the tapping process I'll probably give you a little demonstration later but uh, basically just tap both those holes and then got some some of the screws the 4x40 screws from Radio Shack and I just put them on there and I'll show you it in action so you can hear it clicking now this is for somebody that doesn't really know what they're up to and um, has no idea how to do this so if you're an advanced person this video might not be good for you but I'm gonna try to make this simple for someone that's not used to uh, doing you know machinist type operations I'm a machinist so this parts easy for me but the uh, the wiring part is where I'm clueless so 
I'm going to have to add a spacer behind here. I'll probably machine one out of aluminum. I see some people make them out of plexiglass and plastics and other things. I might uh, entertain that. Maybe I'll do aluminum, though. Um, so anyway, I'm going to turn the power supply back on. I'm going to go ahead and bring this up. You should hear it click once it reaches its upper limit. Now, I don't have it wired yet, so it's not going to shut off. I don't know if you can hear that click. I've got a phone call.